This film begins with a big party thrown by the most powerful and respected Yakuza family in Osaka, Japan. At the party, the Yakuza family introduces their youngest daughter, who is still a toddler, to the guests. Unfortunately, in the middle of this happy event, someone suddenly attacks and starts shooting everyone at the party. The Yakuza family is massacred. Even when the son of the Yakuza leader tries to reach his lifeless mother, the killer immediately shoots the boy. 20 years later, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a man wakes up in a hospital with no memory of what happened to him. When he tries to leave his room, he is stopped by several people who do not let him go. The man, who has no name, is left wondering how he ended up in the hospital with cuts all over his body. In another part of Sao Paulo, where many Japanese descendants live, a girl named Akemi is practicing sword fighting with her teacher, Chiba. Akemi has no parents and has lived only with her grandfather since she was a child. Recently, Akemi's grandfather passed away, so she was entrusted to Chiba, who trains her hard. When Akemi feels like giving up, Chiba reminds her that her grandfather wanted her to become strong and unbeatable. Meanwhile, in Japan, a Yakuza named Takashi gets a phone call from his subordinates after spending time with a woman. After ending the call, he rushes to a place where a man named Yoshiaki, who is believed to have betrayed him, is being tortured. Before dying, Yoshiaki tells Takashi that his boss knows the secret Takashi has been hiding. Yoshiaki's boss even sent an assassin to kill the person Takashi is hiding. Hearing this, Takashi becomes furious and kills everyone in the room. Back to Akemi, who has just finished training at Chiba's dojo, she hurries to the shop where she works. Not long after, Akemi's friend comes to talk about her love problems and advises Akemi to find a boyfriend. Akemi says she doesn't have time to think about that because she is still sad about her grandfather's death. When Akemi returns home, she prays for her late grandfather while remembering various memories about him. At the hospital, the man with amnesia wakes up with his hands handcuffed until a doctor and a team of police investigators come to give him a katana that he was holding when found unconscious. The amnesiac man says he doesn't remember anything, including the katana. Shortly after the doctor and police team leave, the amnesiac man secretly removes the handcuffs, goes into the bathroom, and comes out wearing different clothes. After looking around, he deliberately presses the fire alarm, causing chaos in the hospital, which he uses to take the katana from his room before finally escaping from the hospital. At the headquarters of the big Yakuza boss, Takashi arrives at the same time as Kojiro, who is his rival. There, Kojiro complains to the boss about Takashi killing Yoshiaki. Kojiro uses this to convince the boss that Takashi is becoming untrustworthy. To prove his loyalty, Takashi offers to cut off his finger, but the boss stops him, showing he still trusts Takashi. Kojiro warns Takashi to be careful if he doesn't want to lose his life. Meanwhile, in Sao Paulo, the amnesiac man walks through the city without knowing where to go. The next day, Akemi is at a tattoo shop to get a tattoo of a symbol her grandfather always showed her. Even though she doesn't understand the meaning of the symbol, she chooses it to remember her grandfather, who was killed by a mysterious person with a katana. In another part of the city, the amnesiac man looks at the katana he is carrying, hoping to remember something about what happened to him. He also removes the bandage from his face, revealing cuts from sharp objects. A few days later, Akemi celebrates her birthday and her friend invites her to a nightclub party. Akemi enjoys the party and decides to go on stage to sing her favorite song. Unfortunately, a rude man disturbs and teases her, so she fights him. At that time, his friends try to defend him, but the fight is stopped by nightclub security. On the other hand, the amnesiac man was walking down a street when he felt drawn by the katana he was holding to enter an antique shop. There, he found the sheath for the katana. Soon, the shop owner, an old man, appeared and said the shop was closing. The amnesiac man ignored him and rudely asked about the katana. The shop owner explained that the katana had been left there to be sharpened. The katana, known as Mira Mesa, was cursed and made its owner constantly seek out victims. Soon after, the shop owner gave the amnesiac man the address of the katana's original owner to get more information. Meanwhile, Akemi was at home, opening a drink her grandfather had saved for her birthday. She felt sad and unmotivated, especially since she was living alone. The next morning, the amnesiac man went to the address given by the shop owner and took the elevator, which led to Akemi's apartment. When he entered, Akemi was not home, 
so he started searching every room for clues. Unfortunately, he did not find any answers about his lost memory. At the airport, Takashi arrived in Sao Paulo and gave a signal to the driver to take him somewhere. Meanwhile, Akemi is being chased by the guys she beat up at the nightclub. She runs to her apartment to hide, but they break in and try to attack her. The amnesiac man, who is still in the apartment, helps Akemi fight them off. The delinquents have weapons, so Akemi grabs the Muramesa katana and slashes one of them. Soon after, Takashi arrives, and Akemi and the amnesiac man think he is with the delinquents. At that time, they try to escape to the roof. Then, Takashi chases them and shoots at them. The amnesiac man fights back, knocking Takashi's gun away, and with Akemi's help, they push Takashi into a moving elevator to escape. To avoid being caught by Takashi, Akemi takes the amnesiac man to Chiba's dojo. There, Akemi helps clean the man's wounds. Even though they don't know each other, they feel connected through the Muramesa katana, which they think can help them find answers about their past. Later, while looking for medicine in the dojo, Akemi finds a photo of her family with Takashi. She asks Chiba, who has just arrived, about it. Chiba says Akemi needs to talk to the owner of the shop where she works to get answers. He also tells her that her life depends on the Muramesa. Without wasting any time, Akemi decided to leave immediately to find answers about Takashi's relationship with her family. Meanwhile, the amnesiac man, realizing he has been left behind, secretly follows Akemi. Arriving in front of the shop, Akemi meets the owner, Mrs. Tsugahara, who says she talked to Akemi's grandfather before he died. There, Tsugahara gives Akemi an address written in Japanese. After meeting Tsugahara, Akemi continues her journey by train to the address her grandfather left. Meanwhile, at Akemi's apartment, the police are investigating the commotion reported there and collecting evidence. A bit later, Kajiro and his men arrive in Sao Paulo, go to Akemi's apartment, and attack the police. It turns out Kojiro and his men are hunting Akemi. On the train, Akemi, who has fallen asleep, wakes up to find the amnesiac man beside her. He explains that he has no other way to restore his memory except by following Akemi, who is also connected to the Muramesa. Hearing this, Akemi finally agrees to let the amnesiac man come with her. Arriving at an old village, Akemi and the amnesiac man met two old men who tried to chase them away. Shortly after, Akemi showed them the Muramesa sword she had, and the two men, dressed in traditional Japanese clothing, allowed her to enter. At that time, the amnesiac man was only allowed to wait in a room with the two old men, who showed him their Yakuza tattoos. Soon after, Akemi met an old woman in a kimono who brought her to the leader of the Yakuza group in the area. The Yakuza leader told Akemi that in the Yakuza world, friends and enemies can change suddenly, so she must be ready for a long journey to fight for something. At that moment Akemi didn't fully understand what he meant, but listened quietly. Then, she was told to clean up and rest while waiting for someone to meet her that night. Meanwhile, the amnesiac man, still waiting for Akemi, drank too much wine and passed out. Shortly after, the two old men dragged him to a warehouse and left him there. Later that night, after the rain stopped, the old woman took Akemi to a nearby graveyard. She let Akemi find answers about her past. After walking around, Akemi found her grandfather's grave, which had a storage box. Using the light from a traditional Japanese lamp, Akemi opened the box and found a newspaper clipping. The clipping revealed that Akemi was the daughter of the largest Yakuza group that had been massacred by their enemies. Meanwhile, in the warehouse, the amnesiac man wakes up and realizes he is locked in the storage room. At the cemetery, Akemi raises her katana when she sees Takashi, who had been chasing her before. There, Takashi calmly approaches and tells her he won't attack. Then, a group of people arrives at the cemetery, and Takashi tells Akemi to hide. Unexpectedly, Kojiro and his men attack the village and take the Yakuza leader away. Meanwhile, the amnesiac man, just out of the warehouse, is shocked to see everyone lying dead. At the cemetery, Takashi and Akemi quietly knock out several people. But there are too many enemies, so Takashi uses his gun, leading to a shootout. While fighting, he urges Akemi to leave. In the yard next to the house, Kajiro forces the village's Yakuza leader to reveal where Akemi and Takashi are. When the leader refuses, Kojiro gets angry and beheads him. Meanwhile, 
when Takashi and Akemi were about to flee in Takashi's car, Kojiro's men fired shots, forcing them to hide again. Luckily, the amnesiac man arrived and fought Kojiro's men, allowing Takashi to take Akemi and escape, leaving the amnesiac man still fighting. The next morning, Takashi took Akemi to a safer place and told her how she was hidden in Sao Paulo after surviving the massacre. At that time Takashi had to pretend to be loyal to the killer of Akemi's family, who was now the big boss of the Yakuza in Osaka. In that moment, the big boss found out Akemi survived and sent an assassin to kill her grandfather. Strangely, this assassin lost his memory and is now helping Akemi. After finishing the story, Takashi told Akemi she needed to return to Japan to revive her family clan and fight against the big boss. In the middle of his explanation, Takashi realized Akemi had secretly left. Soon after, Akemi decided to go to the dojo to meet Chiba, but she found her martial arts teacher dead in a pool of blood. Shortly after, the amnesiac man arrived at the dojo. Filled with anger, Akemi attacked him, thinking he killed Chiba. The amnesiac man tried to get away and asked Akemi to calm down and listen, but she kept attacking until Takashi arrived and tried to kill the amnesiac man. Akemi stopped Takashi, saying she had forgiven the amnesiac man. Akemi and Takashi then rushed to the helicopter pad on the roof of a nightclub building to get to the airport. At the nightclub, a man guided them through various rooms where the Yakuza did their illegal businesses. They didn't know that assassins were waiting for them. Akemi and Takashi had to fight the group of assassins. After defeating their opponents, Akemi, with her remaining strength, helped the injured Takashi to the roof. There, Kojiro and his men were waiting with the amnesiac man as a hostage. Soon after, Kojiro attacked and killed Takashi with his katana. In his final moments, Takashi vowed to stay loyal to Akemi's family. At that time Akemi was in a tough spot because she had to face Kojiro and his men alone. Luckily, the amnesiac man fought back and defeated Kojiro's men. Shortly after, Akemi took out her katana, and Kojiro did the same, so they began a sword fight. Even though Akemi was injured, she kept fighting until she paralyzed Kojiro. To end the duel, she slashed Kojiro with her katana. At the end of the film, Akemi approaches the amnesiac man with the Muramesa sword pointed at him. The amnesiac man swore he did not kill Chiba, so Akemi believed him and gave him the name Shiro. When the helicopter arrived, Akemi asked Shiro to go with her to Japan to face the big boss who had massacred her family 20 years ago. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is never underestimate the power of a good katana and always keep an amnesiac buddy around because they might just save the day. And remember, if things get tough, just call for a helicopter escape.